What Crossings does for people who are not preachers is that it allows them to hear a good sermon, even if one might not be preached. All of my imperfections, being smart for generosity. It's become such a way of life for me. Crossings is not a sect of Christianity. Crossings is a tool that we use to understand Christianity. A way of understanding life. It's a lens. It really is good, and it is something new. Okay, a quick summary of the method. Three steps under the God diagnosing us under our laws so we come to our true predicament and plight vis-a-vis -vis God. God is finally a problem. There's the God problem where we're, we're sinners and we're in trouble. And the other side of the matrix, the prognosis, the hope comes from Jesus Christ and his cross, which, uh, uh, which God offers us life and hope and forgiveness and freedom under the good news which then leads to a new faith and trust in our hearts which flowers in a new life of love and care of neighbor. What would be law and gospel? Well, it's um, God's two words that God speaks to humanity. The word of law is, well, the sort of traditional catechetical answer is like a it's God's left hand governing of the world. On the one hand, it's like that curb that keeps law and order in the world, keeps people going on the straight and narrow, helps us to uh, care and for our neighbor, a garden, protect others and human life. Um, and the second part of the law that's so important is the is the uh, the mirror which uh, exposes the truth in all of us that we are trapped and stuck in our fallen humanity and God is not pleased with us and is therefore driving us to God's other word, God's contradictory word, contrary word of promise, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, God's grace and unmerited grace and mercy for, for human beings. Uh, if the law is a word of compulsion, if it's gotta, must, where God says it's up to you to do this. The gospel is absolutely contrary. It is gift, it's mercy. Our response is one of freedom. We get to uh, care for others, to be God's people in the world. It's absolutely central for me in being able to live my Christian life and to carry out ministry. I, it is the fundamental framework for understanding my relationship to God, the, the relationship of the world to God and for doing ministry as a pastor. Couldn't function without it. Because ultimately, it's all about Christ. In the midst of a world where there are constant obligations and gottas and musts and shoulds, here is a place where what brings us together is that is God's unconditional love for us in Jesus Christ and we get to believe that and we get to live a new life out from that. That has been at least for people in my congregation, a word of hope and life, and it becomes a helpful handle for them to describe the new kind of freedom that Christ brings for, the Christ, for this Christian community called church. It means that when I deal with people in my congregation, when I try to help leaders in terms of dealing with one another, it's always in terms of the get to. We support things in this congregation because we want to do it, because Christ has freed us for, the, for this. Uh, we don't strong arm, we don't coerce, we don't browbeat people. If something doesn't happen in the congregation, and we think it should, but nobody wants to do it, then maybe we shouldn't be doing it. And uh, that sometimes is a, is a risky way to live in a congregation and have life in a church community because we've all got our pet projects for which we have uh, um, what we think divine authorization for doing and it ends up being simply coercive and enslaving for people. It creates nothing but guilty consciences. I want people to participate in this thing called the Christian Church out of the freedom of Christ and the gospel. So where I serve I tell my leaders time and time again, it's a get-to. And if it's not a get-to, don't do it.
A lot of the history of crossings has been a result of the powerful personalities, skills, and teachers of the past, people like Ed Schrader and Bob Bertram, uh, and their students, uh, like myself and others. We're all getting a little long in the tooth, and the world is changing, and we need to pass this, what I consider to be a great gift to the, to the church and its mission, onto younger people, to a new generation. It's time to pass the baton. Uh, what we are about is too precious to simply have it go to the graves with all of us.